Hello there, it's Karen Baker with January's Tonic Studios Designer's Choice. And this month you have got a really clever idea for creating a trifold card with a bit of a difference. So you're going to end up being able to create this card very, very easily, no measuring, no fuss. Now, those of you that are looking to purchase it, it is now $19.95. They've just reduced the price, so you do not need to add a code in. Um, so you can get this from Tonic UK and Tonic US store. Um, just have a little look online. And I'm just going to show you one idea of how to create a card using this fabulous die set. So let's get started. So let's have a look at the dies in the set. Now, the main dies are the three here. So let me bring this one up. So this one, you can see I've still got the lettering in here. This cuts out this panel, which you can see here. Some of these actually come out completely like this. And some of them are attached. Do excuse me, my cat's just decided to join in with the video. Go on. Um, some of these are attached to the layer so that you can actually do it like that. And the flowers are the same. This one comes out here. This other flower you can put up so, and these ones come out. So that's how that one cuts out. And you can see just, just being the operative word, just from this panel here, that that's where you can start to get really creative. You don't even need to use the other bits that are designed because if you're to put a plain or even pattern panel underneath, look how it comes alive. Now, with the set, you have got all of these extra dies. So if you wanted to put, let me just get one of these, the because, you can actually pop just because onto your card. There is also um, with love, there is married, there is um, to say and a note. So obviously just a note, just to say, just married, and um, just because you can add all of these onto your layers of your card and your design. And you've also got lots of different little elements. You've got leaves, um, these centers of the flowers you can use independently, or you could actually use them on the inside of your cutouts. And um, you've got lots of different ones. These will nest within these, the same with these two. Um, and this one would obviously go within various different ones. So there is an awful lot of things that you can do and then plenty of design choices. You've got the outers to go with each of these sets. So again, you can put your uh, different colors on the backing. Uh, so you can, honestly, the sky's the limit. I have to be, to be brutally honest, when I first saw the die set, I just thought, oh, okay. There's not a lot of creativity that I can use with this. But once I started to play, I realized that actually there's a whole load. So let me show you how it is designed, the basic idea behind it. You've got this panel, and then the next panel, which cuts out this. And again, you've got exactly the same thing. Sorry, you've got a little flap on there. This, you can push these up to make them more dimensional. Uh, that one, it's like exactly the same, and these ones come out. So even if you put a little layer underneath, you'll still be able to see that one come through. So that's the second element that goes there. And then the third one, um, which is this die, obviously comes out with you. Now, depending on the colors that you choose, this will make a big difference to the final result. Now, you've got flaps on these two here. So this can be used as a standalone piece. So all I would do is, in fact, I'll do it now so you can see it basically, and then we'll make um, my card up. So what I'm going to do is we're going to stick this. So on the back of this one here, we're going to attach the glue. And the secret to this, particularly if you're using it as a card in its own right, is to layer up, <clears throat> level up the, the bottoms of each of the different layers. So make sure that these stand flush. Now, if you're putting it on the front of a card and you're, sorry, you've got a base behind it, it's not such an issue. But if you're using it as it is by itself, then in order for the card to stand up correctly, you are going to 
need to put those so that they are flush together. So the third layer, exactly the same, add glue to the reverse. There we go. And then, as we did before, make sure you line up the bottoms of the pieces so they sit flush together. And then when the glue has dried, you're left with this really clever zigzag effect card, which when you look from the front, this is how it's going to look. So even without putting a back on, doing anything, not even adding any of the elements, you've got quite um, a detailed looking greeting, which is going to be a really different sort of a card for people to receive. Don't forget that obviously you don't have to use all of them. If I was just to use these, that would make a really great tag. You can add things, you could obviously cut this off, you know, there are so many different things you can do with it, but that is the card in its basic form. Obviously, the things that you've got left behind, this just is going to be really useful to you whether you're using it alone because if you pull out these and you get the individual letters like I'm going to use you can use those on a card no matter how big you need it to be um, by just using the letters and maybe not using the panel itself but let's get on to making the project that I actually have set up so let me just clear this out of the way now I haven't done it in its entirety, I'm just going to show you the bare sort of bones of how to do it so that you've got a good idea. Um, but I've started off and I'm actually going to mount my finished card onto one of the card blanks. Now this is one of the card blanks that uh, Tonic sell. This is the US A2 size and it happens to be a complete perfect fit for this. Okay, so if you want to get hold of these, they're available in both the UK and US Tonic store. Do have a look out for them. They are a lovely bright white cardstock and they are also a really good weight. So that's our basic. Now you can see a little hint of what I'm doing. I'm actually starting to colour these in and to colour them in, I'm actually using my one of my favourites of the Nouveau range, which is the Aquaflows. And the colours I'm using are Flamingo Pink, Aqua Splash and Fresh Green. So only using three colours, uh, you can get hold of those again in stores. I've also got a little acrylic block. I am going to be using my Aquaflow water pen. This is the medium water brush. Uh, and you'll just see as we go on, I'm not using a lot of products because I think sometimes if we're starting out, we don't want to buy tons and tons of things. So I'm trying to make it fairly straightforward. So that I would have um, die cut out my panel in white and then for the next panel the four I've actually die cut this from chili red this is our craft perfect range if you're not um, if you're not uh, used to seeing this it does have a texture on it if you don't want the texture let me just see if you can see it then by all means just turn it round and die cut onto the other side which doesn't have as much texture on it so that's the four and then for the final uh, bit on the back the panel on the back I'm using more craft perfect in ocean blue which is this gorgeous greeny blue color and I've cut that out just slightly smaller than my just panel so the next thing that I did once we've obviously cut these out um, I have saved the uh, negative letters and I've also die cut this in white cardstock as well because what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop the letters off because what I wanted to do was have more white and colour on my card so if I bring in the U you can see I've started colouring this I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it but rather than you get bored watching me colour I thought I'd do most of it to start off with and then I've got my letters here so if I bring these in I'm going to use these and actually put them back in. I mean, obviously, just by themselves, they're actually a gorgeous font. I do love this font. So let's put those in there. So I'm going to show you how I did it just using some of the blank letters there. So I've got my J and my S. So to start off with, um, you can do it one of several ways. If you're not using a very heavyweight cardstock, just be wary of adding too much water to your letters, otherwise you'll end up warping your cardstock. So I'm gonna use this one, the Flamingo Pink, 
and we just brush a little bit onto our acrylic block or if you don't have an acrylic block a CD case or something that's just not porous and then I'm gonna get my water brush and just check yeah it's okay sometimes I'm not very good at cleaning and I forget to clean and then I mix my colors so what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the water brush um, a bit of the water from the water brush and put it into the color but I don't want to take the strong color to start off with what I'm gonna do and hopefully I'll try not to get my head in the way this time um, I'm just going to brush it on now what would be really good is if you actually wet it slightly first I'm just going to take it down so what I'm doing is I'm trying to use up some of the color off my water brush so that when I come back down I've got a lighter color if that makes any sense because the more I put that onto my acrylic block the less color that I'll have because what I want is like a, a graduated color so hopefully you can see there that I've got a much lighter pink and it's going to go to a stronger pink now while I've got the lighter pink there I can now add more color into the top but what I would say to you is if you're going to do lots of this and adding more color it's well worth waiting for the cardstock to dry otherwise you will get furring on your cardstock so I'll pretend that I've let that dry. I haven't actually added too much water. When you're using this, it's well worth doing the little edges around the sides as well, otherwise you tend to find you've got um, white showing through. So that's all I would do. I would just be building up more and more. Sorry, my cat's back again. I'm gonna have to shut you out. Go on, out of the way. Good boy. So we're just gonna add more and more and then leave it to dry. You can add some more. And if you're feeling that you want an even stronger color, by all means, just go in um, and use this straight from the pen because I know that that's going to be the most concentrated color. So that's all I've done. And you can see already that I've got a difference in the colors. Now, once that's dry, if you have a real firm line between this color and this color, all you need to do is just make sure you haven't got very much color on your pen and then I would just add a little bit of water and what will happen is the it will actually um, soften the colors because you're just moving the dye around with the water so if you've got any hard lines you can actually remove them afterwards so that's how we would do those letters so I've done them with these two colors see here if I bring these up here you'll be able to see them so I've done those already and the only other things that I need to do are to colour in my flowers. Now I've just added the green from this fresh green onto the leaves and then I've added, I've done exactly the same thing so I've put more colour in the middle and less colour on the outside. So if I just scribble those on quickly, you'll see. So start off in the middle and if you're worried that you've got too much colour, dab a little bit off and then you're just going to pull the color. Obviously I'm doing this super speedy. You'll have it done much more quickly. Okay. And then add some more color in the center to try and give a bit of depth to the flower. So you can see, really, really easy. Very easy to get an effect with these Aquaflows. They really are fabulous pens. So I've also done that with the four. So all I'm gonna do now, is put the card together it is actually really really simple and this is the sort of thing that you could do while you're sat watching television it's quite therapeutic very relaxing so what I'm going to do is cut those off it's quite easy to see where to cut them off it's not difficult at all so I'm going to cut each of these off I mean you didn't have to you could by all means just use the whole um, section in white and then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add all of these together. What you're probably not going to want to do is attach this after. What I want to put all of these together, let me just show you what I mean. When we're curving our little sections round, it's a really good idea because there's going to be quite a lot of opening and closing potentially, if you make sure they're secured really well. So I'm going to actually add this little tab behind this layer and so I'm going to make sure it really is sandwiched well. So now I'm just going to um, stick it all together. I'll do one and then I'll come back to you when I've stuck them all off on rather because I'm um, sticking them onto 
the individual letters isn't terribly interesting. The glue that I'm using is the um, Deluxe Adhesive, which is my favourite glue. And that makes this task nice and easy because if I haven't got it exactly so, I can just move it around a little. But you can see already, it's quite transformed. So I'll get on and take you um, to the point where I'm ready to stick the whole thing together. So before I actually stick it together, I thought I needed to say that um, when you have got to this point, it's much easier to poke these up before you actually stick it down because you can put your thumb or your finger underneath and support the rest of it while you're actually lifting all the individual pieces. So you can do it once it's all stuck down, but I've found it's much easier if you do it before. Obviously, if you were doing it just as a standalone card and you weren't putting it on a, um, a base like I'm about to do, oops, don't do that. <laughs> you end up bending your card. I'm definitely going to need my base card now because um, I've managed to make my cardstock a little bit wonky. Okay, so there we've got our flower ready to go. If they're not quite up, it doesn't matter. As long as they're sticking a little bit up, it's much easier to fold them up before you actually stick it down. So I'm going to um, put it down now, although those ones to do as well. So I'm going to put glue. Obviously at this point, this is how you would leave it if you just wanted it a standalone. And if you like it with the um, being able to see through the back and you wanted it to be a little bit more substantial, do think about putting a layer of acetate on the back. So that would give it a little bit more rigidity. But I'm just going to stick it down. So just put some glue. And just bear in mind as well, when you're doing this, make sure you get the tab, but you only want to put a little bit of glue on the inside of there. If you don't put that on the inside of where the flaps are, um, in the very center, what you'll find is, <coughs> excuse me, um, it won't be quite so well supported. So I'm just doing this super quickly, try and make sure that I've got all the little bits with enough glue on. There you go. You'll obviously make a much better job of it than I will. So we're just gonna pop that on there and then give it a really good press down. Move this out of the way and you can see it just brings the colour through. Now the little letter parts there I'm actually going to cover up because I'm going to put my lettering but I mean it looks pretty like that you don't even need to add these. Maybe it's overkill that I'm doing here. There we go. So you can pop those in just like that. I definitely need my glue here because I'm managing to make a right hash of putting them in. So next letter. And don't worry if the, um, the letters move around a little bit, you'll be able to make sure that they're in the right place because you've got the little areas to fit them in. So if they're moving around a little bit, don't worry. There we go. Just gives them a bit more um, rigidity. Right, so we're just going through to the last couple. Getting glue all over the place, making a right dog's dinner of this. I'm sure yours will be much, much better. If you get any glue like I've just done, instead of trying to remove it while it's wet, it's often easier just to wait till the end of the card and then once it's dry, use an adhesive remover. It just saves making, um, getting any staining because sometimes if my fingers have been involved with something like the Aquaflow, then I end up getting some of that and rubbing it into the card and that completely trashes the card. Okay, so we just need to put it onto the base and then I'm just gonna add a couple of Nouveau drops to the center of the flowers. Now, as I say, you don't need to do this. You could just leave it as it is. It is designed to be a standalone card, but I just wanted something with a little bit more strength. There we go. So it's gonna stand up like that and you can put your message on the inside. So just to finish off, I'm using these Nouveau Drops. These are the Dandelion Yellow. 
let me just give it a little squirt out first it's always a good idea when you're using Nouveau drops that you just check they haven't got a blockage in and they're coming out nicely and then I'm just going to add a little one there obviously you have to be careful where you put them let's put one in there if I put it there obviously it's not going to be any good because there's nothing behind that but I can put one on there as well so there we go that's how to use just one idea for a designer's choice for January um, I, I cannot wait to see what you guys are going to create with them um, it really is a card um, idea with lots of possibilities so many dies and you're going to do some amazing things with it I'm sure please do post what you're making on the social media channels we do love to be inspired by what you create and it just helps everyone else who's bought the kit to have more ideas too I shall be back soon thanks for joining me take care bye